everyone. Today on Always and Forever, we have Elizabeth Bechtel Yaman, who was Miss America's Outstanding Teen 2012. And I'm so excited for you all to hear from her today. She was actually one of my judges last year. And so it's really cool to be interviewing her now. <laughs> um, hi. So can you just introduce yourself and share a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and what made you decide to compete in the Miss America organization? Sure. Um, I am originally from Leesburg, Florida. Um, I had done a pageant or two. It's, you know, Central Florida, a popular thing to do if you're in the performing arts. Um, and my sister actually had competed as Miss Florida's Outstanding Teen. Um, and I think because of seeing her experience and seeing that it was like another level of depth and um, really growth in terms of interview preparation and just the complexity um, in comparison to other things we were doing. Um, I wanted to kind of follow in her footsteps, which is kind of funny because she's my little sister, but ended up working out. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool that you and your sister are the only sisters to ever um, hold the Miss Florida's Outstanding title. And then you went on to be the first girl Florida to win Miss America's Outstanding Team. So what was your mindset going to MAO Teen? And, um, you know, what do you feel you got out of that experience? Yeah, well, first I'll say, I think that mindset can be different for everyone. And I think that's 100% okay. I think from those that have won MAO Teen or Miss Florida's Outstanding Teen, um, all of us had maybe a different perspective. And so mine was, after seeing my sister's experience, like I said, um, just getting the most that I could out of that week. Um, because meeting girls from other states really opens up your exposure to all sorts of things, whether it's um, learning about they're from and like the actual physical location and, and understanding like different places throughout the U.S. or it's the education they want to pursue, the talents that they have, the families they have, their backgrounds, um, just the diversity of being there that week I think is really impactful for any um, girl in high school. So I was going in for that, really excited to have new friends. Um, I enjoyed preparing for it, but as with um, most Florida outstanding teens, you are kind of just like flip-flopped right from the state pageant into the nationals. So um, it's more of a whirlwind. And I think that's why though, especially for us that are kind of like going back to back into it, having the perspective of what can I learn from the week versus like, this is my ticket to do something or be something or share my voice. Um, you have your voice as being the state title holder. The, Ability to be a MAOT is wonderful in many capacities, um, but learning from the people that are there with you and developing those relationships, um, I think that's what enabled me to kind of make it to the top, is being so genuinely carefree and wanting to do well for myself, but caring so much more about the people around me that I was distracted from putting too much pressure or stress. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, every single girl there is just so amazing. And it's really cool. Yeah friendships and um like you never would imagine that you would meet those people and it's for me I'm like man I met those people a year ago and they've become some of my best friends like how did I not know them like sooner yeah well for me it's funny I like I met girls that I was you know fangirling over as being their friend even and thought wow I can't believe I get to be friends with these people um and then when I rose in the top 10 and they didn't that feeling of this is so not fair they should be here with me um but then having them say like i really want you to do well for me like i remember two specific faces that said that to me and i think that um if you can like channel that drive of like the people that are supporting you that you've like met throughout the process it's so empowering for sure so you had a super busy year as Miss america's outstanding um, so what were some of your favorite appearances that you were able to go on um, it's, it's a whirlwind being, I, all of you can imagine, um, being in high school and traveling very consistently. Um, and I think that travel's also picked up. It's been about eight years since I was in MAOT. So the organization's changed a lot as it is. Um, I really enjoyed going to cities to perform in the big parades because, um, it wasn't just about performing. It was getting to see the production of how the parades are produced. Actually, John Best, who produces the pageant, produces quite a few parades across the country. And so 
seeing how his team implants from Orlando into another location, organizes all, pulls it off. Like that was absolutely fascinating. And then in conjunction with that, you have the ability to share your platform with local schools. And once you have that like center event that you're traveling for within MAOT, they do an excellent job of making sure that you have opportunities to branch from that. And so um, no trip is for one purpose. <laughs> no day is for less than three purposes. <laughs> Um, everything is jam-packed and um, you know there are a lot of downs with being a MAOT too it's um, you know a, a physical endeavor traveling and being on the go all the time but also just mentally being on your game um, there's you know I always love highlighting that because I think that when you're competing it seems like wow if I could do that think of all the things I could do and you forget that like you're a human too um, and balancing that isn't always as easy as it looks on the outside so I always want to give a, you know, an applause to the current title holder, whether it's on the state or the national level, for just doing it. Whether you're doing well or you had a good day or a bad day, you're there and you're representing, and I, I think that's enough. For sure. So then you went to the University of Florida after your amazing year as Miss America's outstanding team, and I know you were super involved there, and you were even inducted into the UF Hall of Fame. So. How did all of that happen and what specifically were you involved in at UF? Oh, <laughs> all the things. Um, probably actually before we did this interview, Hannah and I caught up very briefly and I think that was my like first piece of advice is there are so many opportunities out there. Um, if I could go back and start my freshman year over, you know, with the so-called knowledge I have now, I would say like look for opportunities that line up more with what you want to do in the long run or you think you want to do and be okay when those change. So for me, when I stepped on campus, really what the majority of the items I ended up following through with and being um, or holding higher leadership positions were what I found the first few months I was there because um, it's the college is a sea of opportunity. And so I was really heavily involved with student government for my first three years um, and all the ins and outs that come with that. Um, I was in a sorority, I held leadership positions there. Um, I worked for the UF Alumni Association and did a lot with um, alumni campaigns. Um, but I say all of that because I could just go down a list of the multitudes of things where you maybe held a position in and you learned something from, you met good people, you put it on your resume. But um, I, I love the idea of like filtering your opportunities because I didn't find what I loved the most until my senior year really the end of my junior year going into my senior year, but I found an organization in the business college called Enactus, um, and they empower uh, students to find needs in their community that are specific to the community. So if your city doesn't have a huge homeless population, don't focus on the homeless, focus on like what is the greatest need first, and then find a way to transition that down to the other needs. Uh, so one of the biggest needs in Alachua County, which is where the University of Florida is, was financial literacy and helping elementary and middle school students actually pass and go on to high school. Um, so I, you know, became heavily involved with that and enjoyed it a lot. And I think that out of all the wonderful things I did at UF, I was Miss UF, had a great year as Miss UF. Um, but all of those things are nothing in comparison to what I found in my senior year. And I think that that was like maybe my final impact that led me to be accepted to the Hall of Fame. So keep your opportunities open. That's amazing. And I know now you're working in economic development at Enterprise Florida and you're encouraging job creation across the state. And you said you're super passionate about financial literacy. So what would you say to my generation um, about our personal finance and how we um, can start learning about that at this point in time? I think there are, I mean, a quick Google will lead you to resources, but I'd say the biggest thing is, um, well, our generation is a big topic, but like if I'm thinking about the girls who will most, most likely watch this interview, um, most of you are either career oriented or college bound. And I would say the first thing for you to do is to evaluate and understand what is going to be the cost of my education and what is my expected salary if I pursue what I'm going, um, what I think I'm going towards. And I, I say this, I say the think and the, the kind of questioning of where you're going because it's 100% okay to have multiple ideas of where you think you could go and pursue them all simultaneously until you find compelled 
to reach a certain direction. And maybe you do one more than the other, or you, just, you, you don't know where you're starting at first. And all of that is okay. But at the end of the day, you need to have some idea of, I'm going to be either having a scholarship here, I'm gonna be in debt here, I may wanna open a, up a credit card to build my credit and pay that off monthly. Um, it doesn't really matter where you're at in the string of all of it or what you find is best for you. It's that you did the research to understand, you know, here's where I'm at financially. Here's where I'll be at financially when I finish college or when I finish the first stage of my career. Um, and starting to plan that out and maybe even keep like an Excel sheet now of like, what do you think your expenses are going to be? And, and revisiting that um, continually as you're in college. And like, again, that's all a very basic approach to just what I would say is awareness and critical thinking. Like enter into your young adult years with the awareness and critical thinking of like my finances will really matter a lot. Like my independence and my security on myself relies on me being self-aware. Um, and then I'd be happy to share at some point, there are multiple resources for learning about um, different types of loans, um, different types of debt, just lots of different resources. And you can find those as you move forward. But the first step is self-awareness of where am I at now and let me do my own research. That's fantastic advice. I'm going into my senior year in high school. So that's something that's really important to keep in mind right now when I'm looking at colleges and what I want to do. So I'm totally going to keep that in mind. I know that everyone else will too. Um, so, I'll have to share some resources at some point that you can share. Yes. So how do you feel like Miss America has prepared you and equipped you um, for your current job and everything that you're involved in and being successful? In many ways. Um, I think the ability to present yourself and your ideas um, in an interview is by far the most helpful. And I would honestly leave it at that. Like the rest of the pageant is a lot of times a lot of fun and you gain small skills. But at the end of the day, being able to communicate who you are and what you desire is really, really important. And even so, for me, even thinking about doing this interview now, I've um, come into a role in my job where I'm really good at talking about my position and I discuss, you know, why the state of Florida is a great place to do business. So I'm good at talking about that, but I forget that there was a season of competing where I was a really great communicator. I had a great vocabulary. I knew what I was mission oriented towards. So even doing this is um, a great reminder for me that that's a, such a healthy place to be in for you, um, for your personal development and also for your professional development, whatever it might be. Um, so I'll have to do this more often. But I think as, especially being a teen, like focusing on interview and not on how you're gonna answer specific questions, more so on like, why are you gonna answer specific questions the way you do? What do you believe and why now? Again, as with your career, okay if that changes. We are so happy to see change and growth and acceptance that maybe what you wanted or how you believed in something has changed over time. But to know why you are where you are right now is like invaluable as a teenager. And I guarantee you, it will help you so much more than anything else um, as you, you know, finish out high school and embrace the next stage. For sure. So speaking of being involved in the Miss America organization, um, what, was an, what was your favorite area of competition when you were competing as an outstanding teen and then when you competed for Miss UF? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think I had a specific favorite. I think I enjoyed the challenge of interview, um, but it's also terrifying. No matter how well an interview might go, I'm sure, let's, let me just guess that any girl who's done a pageant interview um, walks out the door thinking, oh, I really probably screwed that up matter if you did or you didn't like that like a gut-wrenching feeling is probably the only reason why I wouldn't say interview was my favorite part of the competition but um I I don't think I really had a specific favorite I think each had its own special piece and that's maybe why this organization is so great 
um, you know, the ability to, to work on multiple talents and skills at the same time can be super fun and super rewarding. Yeah, it's so special. Um, and so, you know, something that's so cool about you is that, you know, you've been, a, you've been competing, you've been a title holder, but you also understand the role of being on a judges panel. And so what's your best piece of pageant advice for girls who are going to be competing for Miss Florida and Miss Florida's outstanding team? Sure. I love this. Um, I loved being a judge. I learned so much from being a judge. Um, I could go on all day, but I, I really feel strongly that this organization, as I've kind of like alluded to, like this is a great experience for you, but that's what it is. It's an experience. It's nothing definitive and it does not give you a ticket anywhere. This is merely something to help coach you and practice you for all of the incredible things that you can do in the future, way beyond when you age out of teen. And if you are considering competing for Miss, great, but you might not want to. And when you get past Miss, you also have no option to. And so like seeing the pageant as like the, the premier destination that marks off the success of how hard you work, not going to help you in the long run. And even better, think about how if you're um, presenting yourself to someone and you're talking about all the wonderful things that you're going to do, we are as judges, I mean, every single interview was so captivating to hear what people cared about and where they were going with that, what defined them. Just like, you know, I discussed just a minute ago with like, who are you? just having the crown and exactly what you're going to do with it and how you're going to speak about your platform that's not as much of an interest it's like what is your natural spark like what makes you unique to this like what is your it and focus on your it and present your it like if you are um if you're super quirky great let's own the being quirky if you have accomplished so much with your platform let's talk about that let's talk about what makes you you um, and if you can like focus on that in the perspective of the long-term future and not just being the title holder, I think it'll help you really shape yourself into who you want to be when all the pageant land excitement is over. And that is super rewarding. I know it will be for so many of you. And I, I am like very excited to watch many of you compete, but also just watch many of you and see where you go um, and what you do, because they're going to be wonderful doors open for you. And you're going to open your own doors and the combination of that is going to be really exciting so own it <laughs> yeah like you're going to be successful whether you have the crown and sash or not like you are you with or without it and you should own that right. and anything in your life that's making you feel different then either get rid of that or this isn't for you no. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming on. I, you have such amazing advice, and I know that people are going to be so thankful to hear it and be inspired by it. And um, it was just so fun catching up with you. It was. I am so thankful that we did this. Like I said, um, I'm far out of practice of thinking about this world, and it has reminded me of so many wonderful things that I wouldn't know or wouldn't um, have experience that have really defined who I am. So I'm really appreciative of that. And I hope that everyone watching this can also feel the same way at some point when they're looking back.